Hey guys, the SPL Iron Master Ring Compressor. And I want to wish you a happy new year. Health, good music, good vibes, and peace of mind for you guys and your beloved ones. And to do so, we're going to make it in two phases. Phase number one, we're going to deal with the controls because this guy have a lot of things to propose and you really have to master those to, uh, to use it at its full potential. Phase two, we're going to play with this thing on beats and all that. Okay, so let's do it straight. Now let me lower this hi-fi sound and let's do it. Okay, so you have here the, the GUI which is exactly the same as the hardware. Yes, this is an emulation of a hardware and a mastering uh, beast that SPL made uh, some uh, years ago. And as soon as they drop it, I was thinking in my head, I really hope that they're going to do it in a plugin format. And here it is. So I'm really pleased. So first thing, look at that. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, all the hardware editions, you have it here. So I can see myself using the red for the master, for example, and the all black for the basses and the regular one for the tracks and all that. No gimmick. It's, it can be handy. So left channel, right channel. If you hit this, you have this goodie here. This is an addition to the original unit. And this is something that you, we might see on the future release uh, from Plugin Alliance. I hope so. So basically here you have the MS switch. If I click on it, now we have mid here, side here. Okay, you can link and unlink the parameter here for the tweaking. Okay, all the parameters are stepped like the, on the hardware. So it's great for the recording or if you like a particular setting, it's easy to find the, them back. Okay, I close this. We're gonna check this out later. So here we go. We have the attack and release here, the input and the output. We have the VU meter options in here, rectifiers, we have the sidechain EQs, the tubias, the center section, the bypass in here, and the TIDs here. <laughs> Some people call it like that. The TIDs were the threshold there. Okay, big knobs. Okay, so first the VU meter. By default, you're going to see the gain reduction in here. Then if you switch to VU, you're going to have a calibration by default. You click on SPL and you're going to see it's minus 18 dB for scale, but you can modify it, right? You have another switch here. That's the VU plus 10 dB for scale, which is in our case, the zero now is at minus 18 plus 10, which is minus 8 dB for scale right now. Okay, so it's pretty cool when you have some hot signal that you want to monitor fast without tweaking the, the, the VU uh, calibration and all that. And uh, since it's a mastering compressor aimed to be used on groups or um, on buses, on the masters, uh, it can be really handy. Okay. So the input, the output, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10 and 12 dBs that you can cut or boost. Okay. So those are the values for boosting or cutting the input and the output uh, stage right attack and release that's that's where it's, it's becoming cool so basically you have six values here of attack and six steps also on release but those are not fixed this is what uh what's it's interesting about this compressor because those values depends on the rectifier in here okay so let me just uh speak a little about the signal flow. We have to understand what is going on. So basically, there's a lot of going on, but understand, I ain't gonna go deep here because my English is not quite good to be uh, as uh, cooling on explanation as in French. But basically, everything is happening here on the tube stage. And you gotta understand that the signal is coming here, but the voltage also in green is coming here and the a combination of a lot of stuff gonna um, impact the behavior of the tubes in here okay so basically let me just show you the tube thingy 
Okay, let me just find it. I have a lot of stuff going on. The tubes. Okay, the tubes BIOS switch allows you to de determine the BIOS of the tube according to the settings. Okay, so you have the settings in here, low, mid, high, right? The tube BIOS has three different settings. We saw that together with the input gain of up to plus minus 12 dB and the threshold control, it allows the compressor behavior of the tubes to be perfectly ad adapted to any material. It is a great thing. The attack and release parameter have six different settings ranging from slow to fast. The times are not constant, like I told you. They vary according to the rectifier circuit selected. There are six different rectifiers setting available with different diodes. Okay, you have germanium, silicon, lead, mixed. Here, and germanium also here. Okay, so we go back to the tube. Basically, on the tube, you gotta, you're going to have the voltage that come here and the audio. You have the cathode, the anode. The stronger the voltage, the bias voltage is here, the less signal going to make it from the cathode to anode, which is the equivalent of having more compression. Okay, So this is why, like I told you before, playing with the tube bias and uh, the threshold and the input gain give you a lot of control for the for uh, uh, controlling the, um, the amount of compression you're going to have in any type of signal okay you can cover ba basically every scenarios with that okay so basically the modulation of the the tubes behavior is the sum of the threshold the rectifier the side chain EQs, the attack the release basically and don't forget that the attack and the release is <laughs> impacted by the rectifier and all that so yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty complex but you don't have to understand everything like, like, on, on the, the, the schematics. But you just have to understand the philosophy behind that. And we're going to play with it for you guys to, to really be um, cooling with this guy. Okay. So basically, let me, let me show you. Right now, my attack is fast. And my release is fast here. Okay. So basically, you're going to say, okay, this is like fast and fast. Okay. That's, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty uh, uh, logical, but not always, okay? For example, let me put the beat on, right, like that, okay? I'm on a mid bias right now, okay? Now, I'm gonna crank it up, the compression, and you see, even cranked up, it still sounds cool. Let me increase the output. So now, listen when I'm going to increase the bias. Now. Okay, I lower it. Okay, so this is what I, we, we saw just before. But the two bias. Now, listen. Fast, fast, okay? Now. Okay, everything is back. Yeah, I changed here the, from germanium to lead. And basically here, what I've done is basically, even if I didn't uh, change the attack and the release on the knobs, the values change. So let me show you something. Let me show you something. Here we go. So basically here you have the rectifier type. Germanium here, lead. Silicon, germanium, and the, the mix between germanium and silicon. So first, I was on position one for attack and release, okay? On the first rectifier, germanium. So my values actually were 0 0.1 and 100 milliseconds. As soon as I switched to lead, look at that. Boom, jump and release, 600 milliseconds, and 3 milliseconds on the... Um, on the on the attack so basically here i'm typically like uh like uh, my ssl type of compression okay i like to use like the tree for the attack and between three and six milliseconds so so basically yeah uh as you see on this chart uh, it's it's pretty pretty um, 
pretty uh, complete. I mean, the, the amount of attack and release, and I'm pretty sure it's not only the attack and release, but also the knees and all that. The whole behavior of the compressor change. Okay, so basically I see it like that. For me, I, I have one, two, three, four, five, six type of compressor in this guy. This is becoming very uh, interesting now. So basically, yes, SPL say, okay, when you start using this compressor, stick with the lead, it's the more conservative and definitely something I see myself using on the mastering uh, on those days, type of settings, really smooth and transparent stuff. Okay, so we go back here. So now we start to understand the power of this thing. So basically, you, you're looking for, uh, you lo you, you're checking your levels, of, of course, you, you play with the threshold, you select the attack, and then you play with the, the type of material. Okay, and then you again play with the attack and release if you need to tweak it more. Okay, the sidechain EQs, okay, what we have here. Basically, they made some presets uh, for a different type of EQs. Uh, and first, when I saw that, I said, okay, uh, why can't we just make an, our own EQ? Yes, you can, just by using, using the external sidechain position. But I guarantee you guys, when I tried those, those EQ, man, those guys are magic. Okay, this is not like a random EQ's uh, choices. They're spot on. So let me just show you the EQ's presets. So you have EQ1, 2, 3, 4 here. Here we go. So in the presets, you have EQ1, EQ1 here. Oh, this is the green one. This one. Okay. Yeah, pretty drastic, you know? EQ2 here. Bing, 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 bing. EQ3, the blue one. Bing, bing, bing. And EQ4. It's the velvet one here. Bop, 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 bop. Okay, yeah, that's pretty drastic. Okay, uh, drawing is cool, but we're gonna we're gonna hear it in uh, in action. Okay, another section I really love is the center section when we we have the air base and taper off. Basically, you have a small switch here, which is in bypass right now, and when you you engage air base or taper off, uh, here's what we're gonna have. Let me just up. Basically, you're going to have bypass. You already have a roll-off on the highs. This is why this compressor is already smooth when you engage it. Okay. Starting at uh, 7 like that, 7K, and it starts a smooth roll-off. What I will call an analog tap roll-off. Uh, air base, basically, it's like a loudness on your old uh, hi-fi uh, component we used to have back in the days. And um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty dope. And the tape, ro the tape uh, roll off is excellent. I really love it. Okay, basically you have the tape natural roll off, and uh, you, we're gonna we're gonna use it. Okay, so I hope you guys you understand, uh, you try to under you you start to understand the power of this thing, and I don't even play it with this section that we're gonna explain right now. So basically this side. You have the headroom, the high pass filter, the motor maker, the stereo wideness, and the parallel mix. Okay, mix wet, stereo widener here. Okay, uh, easy to understand. Mono maker, we already know. Uh, you already know um, uh, it from the BX control and all that. You can see my videos on it, but uh, we're gonna cover it. High pass sidechain filter, also we're gonna use it. The headroom is excellent because you can, for example, let me. Here, for example, you have a lot of compression and all that, and you see, you hear uh, too much distortions. You can increase the headroom of the whole unit. Here we go. Look at that. You gain in dynamic. You gain uh, you gain in uh, less compression, less distortion, and all that. So if you don't want to mess with the, the things, you can have your, uh, your headroom in here. Also very handy when you have some signals that are pretty hot or uh, not enough hot. Okay, you can play with it uh, with the headroom very uh, quickly if uh, those controls are not enough. Okay. Now you have the TMT. The TMT is something that we saw on the BX control, uh, uh, the BX consoles, uh, 
SSL emulation, NIVs emulation, and all that. And basically, they, they emulated the fact that uh, not two channels are uh, identical. So you have the non-linearities uh, between uh, left channel and right channel, or channel one, channel two, channel three, etc. And so, so they emulated the, this thing for this guy with 20 type of channel, each different. So you can engage it. For example, right now I have seven uh, channels, seven and eight. I like the 10 and 11. And you can not engage it. I have the same channel characteristic for the, the, the left and the right or the mid and the side, okay? So I'm gonna show you what, what we can uh, do with this, okay? So let's start with, uh, let me just put it back here. Let me use this guy. So here, what we have is a, is a plugin made by Flux, which allows you to monitor here the frequency dispersion on the panoramic field, left, center, right. So you have the lows, the highs. You see the high hats here? This is like this. The kick is pretty center, but the bass is boom, 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 all right, okay? So let me show you something. Let me just open my beats and... You hear the kick right now, and you see that it's not straight center, but I know it is in fact. If I disengage the TMT, look at it. Okay, it's it's a uh, it's a little more centered, but we don't we don't uh, we don't uh, really feel it. Let me change the beat for you guys to um, to see it. So, let me just put a regular beat. Yep, yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, it's pretty center, right? Okay, you see? And then when the claps occurs, okay. Now, look when I'm gonna engage the TMT on the lows. Okay, you see how, you see a small shift? Let me just skip the presets. Nice on the, look at that here. Let me just do it like that. Okay. If I disengage, look, it's gonna be straight in the center. Okay, let me just put this thing here. Okay, look here. Now I'm gonna engage it. Okay, so it's less perfect, and basically this is what gives... I'm gonna do it, look, now. Look at that. Yeah. I like this one. Yeah, this one too. You see the shift each time I, s I switch uh, the channels? I disengage. Okay, so you see the impact here. All right. Okay, so let me just, right now, put it back. Uh, we're gonna stay on this bit for a second for me to show you the quality of the compression. Okay. So let me just put this thing back here. Hopla. Okay. So we I take it back here like this. So basically when I disengage this, I'm going to disengage this. The signal is already kind of hot here. Let me change the settings here. And I'm going to put it like that. Just to be straight on the under the the line here for me to know uh, to monitor right to do some AB uh, cooling, okay? So we're gonna stick with the drum in here, okay? We're gonna engage it. I see that's the yeah, two dB of gain reduction. We on the mid here, no side chain EQs, okay? And basically, um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and I really like what it does to um, the transit. Look at it. 
Yeah. Without. With it. Okay, let's say you lose too much uh, bass, right? Side chain here. Here we go. Without. Okay, it's uh, you have more dynamic, right? But it's uh, kind of lifeless now. Yeah, that sound like a. That sound like a record. The kick is master. This sound like coming from the same kit, right? Without. Okay. Now I'm gonna engage the TMT. Without. You see how it's lifeless in the center? Focus. Changes everything. Okay, without. Yeah, that's lifeless. With it. Okay. Now look at that. I'm gonna increase the side chain here. I have more bass, and I'm I'm gonna use the taper loft to master the rumble of the lows and. Uh, the brightness of the clap. So listen. Now. Yeah. Now we're talking. Okay, we're out. Yeah, that's that's crazy, no? Now. Yeah, that sound analog. At least to my ears, my friends. Okay, let me show you something also here. Let me just put it just like that. Let me show you something here. I have the bypass, right? And they introduce here the auto bypass features. The first time I saw that, it was on the on the the the, the guitar amplifier that Brainworks make and basically you can specify the intervals between the bypass and unbypass uh, uh, by choice of seconds or uh, host synced and you're gonna choose the bars so basically here if I put it on automatic you gonna see like it's three seconds okay or I can switch to host sync and then it's gonna be one bar two bar three bar four bar etc so every one bar is gonna switch on off I'm gonna do like two bars, okay? And I'm gonna show you what's going on when you're gonna, we're gonna check the different uh, type of rectifiers. Okay, I'm gonna disengage the, um, the high pass. Okay, I lose some signal here. Engage the tap roll off. Okay, feel the pinch. Now, okay, second position of the German. Basically, if you want to know the, the values here, let's look at it. The silicon, the silicon here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.
Yeah, that's pretty nervous. This is why I like it. It reminds me of uh, stuff I like. <laughs> Especially on the release. The release is faster than uh, the, the first Germanium. The attack is uh, a little slower. I like this type of compression. Uh, basically, I do it with uh, the distressor. Excellent. Germanium again, this one. Yeah. I, I like the lows on, on this one. Okay. And then the mix. Yeah. Excellent. Now. Okay, so right now I'm gonna disengage the auto um, thingy. I'm gonna show you the EQs right now. Okay. There we go. Yeah. EQ one. Just to rem remind you the EQs um, settings. There we go. EQ one here. Is the this one? So this is why you feel more the bass because you have here a cut of minus four dB. Okay, here. So basically, this is why uh, I ain't gonna explain to you all the the curve, but we're gonna do it with the first one here. So you have minus four dB until like uh, five hundred, and then you have a bump which is closer to the regular compression, and then two K here. Okay, so basically, look, it's reacting to the bass, kick drum, compressing 2 dB. If we lower on the side chain the lows, it's gonna trigger less the compression. Look at that. Okay. Listen to the clap. Now. Now. Yeah, you see that uh, the 2K preservation is great also for the transient. Okay, AQ2. AQ3. I like this one. It's nervous. Four. Yeah. Crazy, huh? Okay, let's change the beat. Let's change the beat. We go back on a high fifth. Thingy. Let me put the bass. Okay. So we back here. Ooh. Okay, you see, first, you see that it's quite uh, bright, right? You have the kick, you have the kick here, and the bass, which is bomb, bomb, bomb. Okay. If I switch off the stereo mode, it's gonna be a little more focused. Now. Okay, let me just put this here. Okay, listen. Huh? The kick and the bass. Now. Okay, you see how it's open? Now. So I'm facing a problem right now, is that I love what it's like that, but I lose focus. I love the stereo expression of this thing, but I lose the focus, right? Okay, so first, I'm gonna stay like this, and we're gonna make a, a cool compression on it, okay? We're gonna find the, the right curve here. I like this one. Let me try. Second. Nervous one. Okay. This one. I think it's great for this beat. Okay. We 
things out. Now. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. You feel the bass? Now. Take you one. We're gonna do it like that. It's big, okay? Same level. I'm not tricking you guys, okay? Okay. Now I'm gonna play with the tap for love. There we go. Yeah, like it like that. It's less harsh here. Okay. Give out. You see here? The amplitude minus uh, minus 15 dB now with the tear fall off. Look at that, it's smaller, right? And I feel it. Okay, I think I think I'm, I'm gonna stick with this compression, right? Now I have another problem is that here the density here. Too much stuff going on here. So I want to gain some focus, right? So here we go, monomaker. And see how we're going to bring it back in the center. Yeah. See how, you, how it is? 200, yeah. Yeah. Nobody move here. Now I have the density I want, but I'm losing the stereo wideness I had without lesson. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Like that. And now I'm gonna play with this thing. Okay, here we go. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay, I have the the bass, the bom bom. Okay, spread, but I have the density in here. So I gain here the the stereo mode of the TMT. I gain this. I let him play uh, upper uh, 150, 135 hertz. Everything below is controlled by the monomaker and everything up is impacted by this and this. Okay. Okay, now let's see the moment of truth. Without. Yeah, it's lifeless. Listen, we have a, a lot of stereo information, but listen to the kick. And now. Yeah. It's little, it's a, a little, uh, I'm gonna compress more. Listen. Just to show you that this compressor is just wicked. Okay, now, now we're straight. I'm gonna make the auto on two, two bars. Now. Yeah. That sounds like a record for me. It's lifeless. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me make you hear the air bass thingy. Yeah. <laughs> I will definitely not use it here. Okay. But sometimes it can be handy if you have some bit that uh, already have been uh, some materials that have been too much uh, rolled off. And with it. Yeah. A 
That's crazy. I like this preset, man. <laughs> I'm gonna like call it Yep. <laughs> yep, my friend. Okay, let's try it on another bit, right? Let me just try another bit. I think this preset might be a, a good auto render. So we're gonna play with this one. Or maybe this one. No. No, I like this one. Oh, I'm gonna play with it. Okay. I'm checking here the levels. Here. Okay. And here we go. Yeah. About the tap roll off, yeah. Without the AQ, yeah, it's, it's too nervous right now. I really like the attack, yeah. Let me just, yeah, I like this attack. Beautiful, that's beautiful. I like the distortion I'm hearing. Okay, I'm gonna lower the this one. The compression basically. Let me just bypass just to see the levels. Okay, I like that. Don't need the mono maker on the state stereo what not to be engaged. Now yeah, that's crazy. I glues the thing together. Without. I like this bit because you really appreciate the transients and the relationship between the, the snare, the kick, the high hats, the claps. Here we go. With the EQ engage. EQ2 EQ3 I like the EQ3 I told you that every EQ here can make something good without With it Yeah, that sounds like a record to me Okay, we what? I love the EQ3, yeah? The kick is banging here. With the tap roll off, I lose the kick here. So we're gonna use the, the high bass. Yeah, I will not use the... Yeah, I like that. It's 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 dope, man. I'm gonna come down here. Yeah, like it like that. Guys, I don't know if you can hear it, okay? I clearly, clearly hear it on my headphones because they calibrated the and all that. But it's just crazy, man. I can tell you that this unit, at the same time, I have the compression, I have the tube behavior, I have even the tape. Yeah. I 
lose too much kick here. I lose the brightness, the harshness. Uh, it's controlling the, the elements. It's preserving the, the contour up better. Okay, let me let me show you on the other beat. Uh, here, what I'm what I'm what I mean by the contour. Okay, yep. I should have recorded this the, the previous setting. Let me just put it back. Boss, boss. Okay, I go back to yep. Yeah. Listen to the contour, the bass. Focus on the, the bass first. Now. Okay, you see how it's flat. Listen to the relationship between the kick, the bass, and the ta. Now. The snare, everything is detailed. You see what I'm calling the contour. You see the forms, the, the instruments in the 3D field. It's more 3D, man. Listen. It's flat. Lifeless. Now. Yeah, that's crazy, guys. So, I'm gonna finish on this one. I know you don't like uh, long videos. I could go on all the night all night long so let me just lower this okay the spl Aron mastering compressor look at look at the the the, the consumptions okay nothing on the cpu right so basically uh you can use it everywhere you want i tried it on vocals synths uh instruments everything everything it handles everything so i don't call it the godfather i call it the predator yeah the spl predator so guys i hope you enjoyed the video please try try it and give me your feedback and uh like if you like it subscribe if you want and share if you want and i hope you enjoyed this uh, video from your boy zo and I catch you next time with some more goodies. Take care of you guys. Bye-bye.